Well, it is spooky season, so why not a rom-com with a twist? Let's talk about the Melissa Barrera film, Your Monster. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews. Welcome to my spoiler-free review for the new film, Your Monster. This stars uh, Melissa Barrera, who you may know from another famous horror series, Scream. She was in the last two installments of that. Uh, you might also know her as a singer, because this is a uh, musical as well, and she was in In the Heights. She was the lead uh, female in that. So uh, we'll launch into the specifics here of this movie in just a moment. But first, let me welcome you back to the channel. Uh, if you are one of my subscribers already, thank you so much. Always love having you guys return to the channel. But if you're not, please consider subscribing. Click that notification bell, and uh, you could just like this video as well or comment below. All that stuff, of course, helps the channel out. So Your Monster was uh, written and directed by Caroline Lindy. And this is based on a short film of hers of the same name from a few years ago. Um, but this is her first uh, directorial as a as a feature film. Um, and this basically is about uh, this gal, Lara, who play, is played by Melissa Barrera. Uh, she is an actress in her 20s who uh, is enduring a cancer diagnosis. And also, uh, she just broke up with her boyfriend, who uh, is played here by Edmund Donovan. Um, and she discovers a terrifying creature in her closet. However, the two of them uh, sort of embark on this uh, romantic journey. And he's played by Thomas Dewey, um, who we just saw in the Saturday Night Live movie. Um, you know, I just saw that maybe two weeks ago. And he plays um, Michael O'Donohue in there, which is the tall guy who uh, was the writer, sort of, um, you know, a, a little more... Uh, stoic and serious than the rest of the crew on Saturday Night Live. So um, his tallness certainly plays into uh, your monster as well because he has to be this sort of, uh, you know, harrowing looking creature or whatever. Um, and you also have um, Megan Fahey here as uh, Jackie Denon. Um, I know her from this show on Freeform called The Bold Type, but uh, she's been in The White Lotus. She's been in uh, a few other things as well. She plays... Um, the woman that gets the role in the musical that uh, that Laura wants to try out for that was actually written for Laura. The, the ex-boyfriend wrote this play. Now he's directing it um, on, I guess it's off-Broadway. And uh, Megan Fahey's character gets the role that was essentially written for Laura. So that's uh, causing problems, obviously, with Laura and the ex and all of that. So there's a lot of romance stuff here. But uh, this is much more than that. Um, in fact, I would say probably by far the weakest elements of this movie are the uh, romance stuff, the rom-com things. There are a couple of montages set to music about um, her and the monster, you know, sort of kindling their relationship and, oh, you know, you know, we're cooking in the kitchen and, oh, we're fighting over what to watch on TV and whatever. Um, so those are the most standard things in the movie. And look, I, I understand that they were purposely done to be kind of cheesy and whatnot. Um, that, that makes sense with what the movie's going for. I, I get that. But, um, the problem with this movie is tonally, it really is all over the place. In the very first scene, we see Laura, um, you know, coming from, from the, uh, the hospital and all of this, and we're learning, um, you know, we think when the credits roll, we think, oh, maybe cancer is the monster. Uh, I went to see this on uh, what what they call a mystery movie. So I didn't know what the movie was that I was even going to see. Uh, but I like to see those because I'm like, you know, I try to see everything anyway. So why not? And I had never even heard of this uh, movie. So when it came up, I thought, OK, is this going to be about cancer? Is it... So when you go into this a movie not knowing exactly what it expects of the audience, it's hard a little bit to tell. Um, you know, am I supposed to be laughing at this? Is this supposed to be funny or is this supposed to be weird or, or whatever? Uh, am I supposed to be scared by this? Is this a horror movie? There's the monster in it. Um, so it's interesting. And I, I don't watch trailers, but I, I usually at least have heard of, you know, the movies I'm going to see. Not always, uh, but usually. So I, I sort of vaguely know maybe who is in it or maybe what the conceit is. But here, uh, because I didn't know and because the audience didn't know, I think it was a little bit unclear with all of the tonal swings. Um, so it's actually, I think it informs my grade a little more that I did see it in a theater of people who didn't know what it was. Because I, I think... A lot of us uh, kind of were like, okay, is this a comedy? Is this, you know, I talked to a couple guys after the movie and um, 
yeah, like, I, it was kind of unclear. But anyway, that's that's not really the worst of it. The worst of it is uh, it, it, it borrows too much from other movies. And the most obvious example is a recent movie, Lisa Frankenstein, from earlier this year, which I thought was okay. I believe I gave it a B-. minus, um, So, you know, a, a little bit above average. But also, it borrows from a few movies I can't even really talk about without giving away spoilers for what's happening. Uh, and, and the end of the movie is, I would say, um, a, a, a solid ending. I, I think it, it definitely stuck that landing, which not a lot of movies can do, especially in, um, you know, sort of genre bending movies or what have you, um, you know, as it turns into a little bit more of maybe a horror movie. Um, I, you know, it never quite got to that point for me, um, but it's not really listed as a horror movie, but certainly they're going for that that those moments a little bit, I think. Uh, but Melissa Barrera's performance is great. Uh, you know, you forget sometimes what a great singer she is. I've seen In the Heights three times, um, and it's one of my favorite musicals the last few years, but her voice is uh, really powerful in this. At the end of the movie, she sings the big number, and it's fantastic. She's just belting it out. Um, and, and her acting here is really good. Uh, but another one of the weaker elements is the design of the monster. It looks like a cross between... Um, the Geico cavemen from those ads years and years ago, uh, and then the subsequent TV show, and the Ron Perlman beast from Beauty and the Beast. He, he, the monster looks like a hybrid of those two uh, characters, and it was very distracting. They, they couldn't come up with something a little bit more original for the monster. Uh, that seemed to be a missed opportunity. That, that seemed to be where you could really let the creativity flow um, with the design. So that, that really didn't work for me either. So look, overall, definitely a, a middling film. I'm not exactly sure, um, what, I, what I expected when I went into that movie, uh, knowing nothing about it from that first scene, because even the first, the first scene is like, oh, this is going to be like a heavy drama. Then it goes into the rom-com stuff and then maybe, uh, some, some light horror stuff, I guess, uh, mixed in with the romance, but it, it's just kind of all over the place. So, uh, a great performance from Melissa, but the rest of the movie, a bit shoddy for me. I leave your monster with a C. All right. Thank you so much for watching Dan Reviews It, and I'll see you next time. Bye.